My name is David Sloan. I'm a criminal defense attorney in Fort Worth, Texas. A large percentage of my practice involves defending highway drug interdiction cases uh, throughout the state. I'm here today to tell you a story about a former state trooper that has not yet been told. And I think it needs to be told. A former Wichita County DPS trooper pleads guilty to one charge and is placed on two years probation in a drug evidence tampering case. 47-year-old Chad Harden of Iowa Park accepted a plea deal to tampering with or fabricating evidence with intent to impair an investigation. Chad Harden was a trooper stationed in Wichita County, which is Wichita Falls, and he was just wreaking havoc on the public. Wichita County or Wichita Falls in Texas is a, is a major crossroads with 287 running right through it. And 287 is the main highway for people traveling from Colorado and, and actually even California uh, coming down off of I-40 to the Southeast United States. Mr. Harden was stopping traffic left and right. He's lauded himself as being the number one interdiction trooper uh, in the state of Texas. And I believe that's accurate. His, his arrest rate was much, much higher than those of his similarly situated peers. Uh, I actually had, a, had my own background investigation done on him and everything, and, and, and let me tell you why. When people get arrested for having small amounts of marijuana or THC or something like that, generally speaking, if the, the officer arrested him fair and square, he didn't lie about the reason for stopping him or he didn't lie about the reason, his justification to search him, treated him with the respect that they were due, there's no hard feelings. All right, we all be careful. I'll stay fit. Thank you, sir. Yes, for, sir. For, 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 yes, sir. Let me make it real. Okay. Be an understanding. Thank yes, sir. You. There's a closure with my client as we're walking out of the courthouse. They're not mad at that officer. He was just doing his job. But not with this guy. Never with this guy. People loathed him as they were walking out. And often, you know, said that he, he fabricated the reasons for stopping him or fabricated the the reasons, said he smelled something that he didn't smell. I believed him. I didn't hear this elsewhere in the state. Other counties I was coming from, people would come walk out of the courthouse. They, they wouldn't say that trooper lied on me, but I got that a lot with this guy. He stopped a lot of people, you know, and, and for very, very small amounts of cannabis or THC, uh, really, really wreaked havoc on him. In particular, the patients the people that were traveling with medi medica medications that were legal in their state or it was legal in the state where they had bought it or whatever and they were just passing through Texas, they'd leave out of here with a felony on their record. So anyway, I received a notice from the state indicating that it's what it's called a Brady notice and that's where uh, the, the state has to disclose to you if there's something wrong with their case. And I had a number of cases uh, in Wichita County involving this trooper and they just basically said that if, if you were to ask Texas Ranger Weaver uh, about the honesty of this trooper, he would say that he doesn't believe he's honest. And that was all this Brady notice said. I thought, oh, there's going to be a lot more to this. You know, I, this doesn't sound to me like he told this Texas Ranger a fib while they were having coffee. You know, there's certainly a lot more going on with this case. The cases I had involving this trooper were all felonies, and first the state offered to reduce them to misdemeanors when I started questioning this Brady notice I got, and I wasn't accepting that. And then they dismissed the cases outright, and then now certainly I was very curious what happened. Well, lo and behold, a few weeks later, this trooper uh, had resigned, and he had been accused of mishandling evidence, tampering with it. And, but he was also charged with possession of a controlled substance. So that certainly piqued my interest as to just exactly how he'd been mishandling it. Now, the, the media just blew right past it. Harden was involved in scores of traffic stops and drug cases in past years, most along US 287. Hundreds, if not thousands of pounds of marijuana and other drugs were seized, along with, in many cases, thousands of dollars in cash. Apparently they just weren't asking the right questions and immediately I started asking a lot more questions. I, I hit the, the Department of Public Safety with a flurry of public information requests and, and they were opposing me at every turn. The main one that, that kind of left me dead in the water was 
uh, that, that it was pending a prosecution. This happened all back in 2019, right before COVID hit. So there's been a lot of delays anyway. But on a weekly basis, I started checking the mainframe up in Wichita County to see when the criminal cases against this trooper uh, were disposed of. And uh, as soon as they were, then I was right back on their doorstep. Highway patrol cars in Texas, they have cameras hidden in the headliners of the patrol car. And that's one of the things that an interdiction trooper will do is they'll stop you and they'll just be just as nice as they can possibly be. Oh, you were speeding, but I'm going to give you a warning. You know, come on back. Come on back here and have a seat in my car. You know, let's, let's, let's be friends, you know, back there and, and getting you back there so that they can have an on-camera interview with you. They're getting ready to interrogate you on the side of the road on camera. You ever been arrested for anything? Mm-hmm. Where you been arrested for? Oh, I should have been one. Part of my request was I wanted all videotapes uh, from this trooper's car. I wanted, I wanted not only the one pointed through the windshield, but I wanted the, 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 the videos of what's going on inside the car. And lo and behold, I got the answer that I was suspected. You know, I've had a lot of clients over the years wonder uh, when the police took their, took their marijuana if they weren't using a little bit of it themselves. And I can say that there have been times where I had a client that had just been to wherever it is they got what they got and they knew that the weight or the measurements of, of what they had in their possession uh, was exact. And when we get the lab report back, uh, it's a little light in terms of what, what the person says they actually had when they got, when they got arrested. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. That, that seems to be a prevailing question that a lot of people that have, have had their marijuana taken from them by an officer, uh, if, if that's not what's going on. And that's what was going on here. This trooper stopped a man uh, on his way back from Colorado, ended up, allegedly stopped the man for speeding, ended up searching his car, uh, took some uh, vape pens from him. No vape pen cartridges with THC? No? Yeah. I, you, I, you, I, get my vape. I do, man. And within five minutes of releasing him, the trooper reached over and got that vape pen out of the seat and was nibbling on it to see what, what it tasted like went another 25 minutes down the road, pulled over on the shoulder of the road, and um, started hitting on it. The DA's office didn't tell us that. I accidentally inhaled THC, as stupid as that sounds. And I felt it fill up my lungs. I pushed it out as fast as I could, and there was smoke everywhere. I never seen anything smoke so much. I did not mean to inhale it. I mean, I smoked weed before highway patrol, I told them whenever I, I came in, I told them all about that. That's embarrassing. I was wigged out. Basically, I caught in his own trap. He videotaped on his own camera, tampering with evidence, as they called it. But what disturbs me is the Texas Rangers found 20 other cases where this trooper stopped somebody, took their contraband, their, their, their THC or their marijuana, and it never made it to the evidence box. You know, he just said, we're going to send this into the state lab for destruction, and it never made it. And what, what troubles me is the district attorney's office knows about those 20 other cases. I mean, it's on video, the trooper taking the, the contraband uh, and, and it never making it to the evidence box. That, and along with the, the video of what he's actually doing with this stuff, uh, I don't understand why the trooper was charged with just one count of tampering with evidence and just one count of possession of a controlled substance. I could understand maybe not charging him uh, with multiple counts of possession since they don't actually have the substance there to test, but they certainly got 20 counts of tampering, and that's a third degree felony. Tampering with evidence is something the police often will charge somebody with here in Texas. Is that if they pull them over and they're like, oh, the cops are pulling me over, and they throw something out the window and the police go back and get it and find that it's marijuana or whatever, frequently they'll charge the driver with tampering with evidence. But typically the, the, the punishment for that is, you know, usually about four years probation. Now, with Trooper Hardin, when he finally went to court, they dismissed the, the possession of a controlled substance uh, outright, and 
they took a guilty plea for the evidence tampering and they deferred any kind of adjudication on him and the deferred period, the deferred adjudication probation period was for only two years. Two years is in a lot of counties what a first offender, two years probation, is what in a lot of counties a first offender gets for simple possession of marijuana without this breach of public trust. You know, at least my clients went out and bought it with their own hard-earned money. They didn't use a badge to, to take it away from somebody else. Basically, when you, t you do a deferred adjudication, the judge says, okay, I've got enough evidence here to find you guilty, but I'm going to withhold that finding. And if you go on community supervision and you do everything you're supposed to do and don't do what you're not supposed to do, at the end of that term, I'll dismiss these charges against you. And at that time, the person who was on community supervision can have the record sealed from public view. So in, in this case, I was very concerned uh, that this, this trooper would be back out on the road wearing, wearing a badge again. I, certainly never with the Texas Department of Public Safety again, but there are some agencies that will hire people they shouldn't. But part of the plea, plea negotiations with this trooper was that he had to surrender his Texas Commission on Law Enforcement licensing, and, it, and he, he's, he signed a permanent surrender. So I think he's pretty much done at least here in Texas. In every profession, you've got good and bad people. You know, you've got people that shouldn't be there and you've got a lot of people that are there doing all the right things for all the right reasons. You know, and I think that, again, Texas, the Department of Public Safety does a very good job uh, screening their employees. Just occasionally a dud gets through, like this one. But there, there's nothing to assure the public that an officer's gonna do what they, they're supposed to do or not supposed to do, but our faith. We have to place faith in them that they're going to do the right thing. Very easy, easily uh, to, to, to pinch from the cookie jar if, if that's what an officer's of a mind to do. Now, a lot of the larger agencies, they have the money and the resources and the internal and, you know, systems and checks and balances with random drug testing and things like that where they could, they could uh, often catch an officer uh, if he was doing that. But I see a lot of rural agencies that... You know, there's just, they don't have the budgets for those kinds of things, you know, to keep, keep everybody on the straight and narrow. Now, I would say this. I, I have no doubt that, that Chad Harden was a rock star with the Texas Department of Public Safety. I saw a lot of evidence of him being called upon to speak about his, his, his prowess and the job he does and interdiction. And, and it's, it seems to have been all mopped up now. I can't find, you know, like exactly what these... these these functions were again, but I saw them over the years. He was their he was their poster boy, you know. He was their golden boy, and I have little doubt that there's going to be law enforcement officers uh, watching this video. And if you've got an officer that's standing head and shoulders over their peers, you know, all things being substantially the same in terms of the volume of calls and volume of activity and all that. But if they're standing head and shoulders over their peers in the number of arrests they're making, instead of focusing on how they're doing everything right, you might better be looking to see if they're doing something wrong. A uh, good example with this trooper. Now, a lot of times <clears throat> he had a reason to stop people or whatever. I mean, they, they made it easy for him. They were speeding or something like that. But I had a lot of instances with this trooper where it was something he claimed to have seen, but it was always, when I would go back and look at the video, what he saw was so far out of range of the camera, you really couldn't tell. I didn't get that with other troopers. Other troopers, if they said, you know, the, the driver failed to stop at a designated line, I could go right back to that video and see it. And in it high frequency with this trooper that that's, that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, when when it's subjective like that, where it's it's where a court has to rely on an officer's word that he did see that, and there's nothing else to support that, most judges will go with that officer. So I think that this could be a good wake-up call that your rock star may not be. I would just like to know why this guy got such a good deal in the justice system, because that's not what I've seen with other people. And I mean, it just seems to me like he should have been made an example of rather than shielded 
from the consequences of his actions. Uh, on these 20 other cases, these weren't cases where there was a custodial arrest. These were cases where a citation was issued, personal use. These 20 cases are just a six month period involving this trooper. I was telling my cousin I got pulled over the back of the wheel. Just being honest, you know what I'm saying? The problem with most people when they get stopped in, in this situation, they think if I'm just extra, extra nice, I can talk my way out of this situation. And the police can, can ask anything they want. And you're free to answer it if you want to, but there's going to be consequences. And uh, one of the, the favorite things the, the cops will do is they'll say, you know, if, you, if you, you're just honest with me. If you only have a small amount and you're up front and off about everything, then, then I'm not going to take you jail. Basically, make it easier on yourself by telling me, you know, that you've got something. And they do. They, they can't confess fast enough. I'm just I'm a pothead. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, they, the officer may not have had any reason to search the car at all, but once you admit something's in there, there you go. They're in your car. The best way to survive any police encounter is to say as little as possible, do as little as possible, and be as polite as possible. You know, don't offer anything and, and you don't have to answer, uh, you know, answer these questions. When I speak of the Texas Department of Public Safety, I think at, I travel the state. I, I go to rural counties where there's really nothing but, uh, well, if you look at the map there, uh, you'll see that every one of those counties I've been there at least once and most of them multiple, multiple times. I think I'm in a better position to speak about our highway patrol than any other lawyer in the state. It's my hope that, that this man never wears a badge again.